Husky football, 1979. It was a record-setting year for the Huskies as they broke five school marks and tied two others and put together their best win-loss record in 19 years and topped the season off with a win over Texas in the Sun Bowl. Yes, 1979 will be a football year to remember at the University of Washington. And it all started with the Huskies playing host to the Wyoming Cowboys at the Western Athletic Conference. And the first meeting in history between the two schools quickly turned into a hard-hitting affair as Husky senior tailback Joe Steele zeroed in on Hugh McElhaney's career rushing record. But Steele had to pay the price, as evidenced by this hit. But when you're in that class, a good hit deserves a pat on the back any time. Steele shows no ill effects because on the next play, he breaks through a big hole in the middle and roars 23 yards to score as he goes on to break Hugh McElhaney's all-time career rushing record at Washington in this game. The Husky defense that will lead the conference in 1979 shows off its stuff early with defensive tackle Rich Lennon and all Pac-10 linebacker Antoine Richardson leading the charge. Then to cap off a big afternoon for the Huskies, senior quarterback Tom Porras has set a Washington record by throwing 88 passes without an interception, scrambles out of trouble and finds fullback Ron Gibson open. Gibson tips the ball in the air before catching it, then bulls his way to a crowd for a touchdown. As the Huskies roll over the Cowboys, 38-2. The Huskies stayed in the Western Athletic Conference for one more week as they played the youth from Utah for the seventh time in history. And the Huskies wasted no time in taking charge of the game with senior nose guard Stafford Mays filling up the middle of the line and driving the Utah runner backwards as he made one of his 119 stops of the year. But the senior from Lincoln High School in Tacoma wasn't through. He comes up with a big rush on this play forcing the Utah quarterback to throw the ball right into the arms of linebacker Bruce Harrell, who races in to score the first touchdown of the afternoon. Utah then bounces right back to score. But then junior Kyle Stevens from San Jose brings the crowd of over 50,000 to their feet as he comes up with a kickoff return of the year so far. He takes the ball at the five, runs through just about everyone on the Utah football team as he returns the kickoff 95 yards for a Washington touchdown. Stevens averaged almost 33 yards of return in 1979, and he combines with Anthony Allen to give the Huskies one of the best return teams in the country. Mike Lansford then breaks the Huskies' all-time extra point record. He finishes the season with 71 straight, and the old record was 40. Lansford did not miss an extra point at Washington. The Huskies smashed Utah 41-7. The unbeaten Huskies open conference play in Eugene against the University of Oregon Ducks on a warm afternoon. And the Huskies trailing 17 to nothing with time running out in the third quarter finally go to work with Tucson Tyler banging through the middle to the Oregon two as he's knocked right out of his shoes. The Huskies then get on the scoreboard for the first time as Joe Steele dies over the right side of the line with 41 seconds to play in the third quarter to get the Huskies on the scoreboard, much to the disappointment of the sellout crowd of over 42,000 at Austin Stadium. The Husky defense then digs in as the fourth quarter gets underway, with Oregon trying to fool the Huskies on this reverse. But the two biggest Huskies on the field, Stafford Mays and Doug Barton, are in the right place at the right time to make the stop. The Huskies get the ball right back, and Tom Porras, who completed 11 of 18 against Oregon, goes for it all with less than four minutes to play in the game. And Ronnie Blacken, who made five catches against the Ducks, is there, but pass interference is called against Oregon. So the Huskies have the ball at the Oregon one, and Joe Steele gets the call and goes over the top to score. One of his 12 touchdowns of the season with just 3.33 to play, and Oregon still leading 17 to 14. The Husky defense holds, and with just over two minutes to play, Oregon is forced to kick away the ball. And Mark Lee will come up with a play Washington fans will be talking about for a long, long time. The senior all-conference defensive back will take the ball near the sideline at the Husky 47, get back across the field and pick up some super blocking, then find a hole and go 53 yards to score for Washington with just 1.59 to play. As the Huskies come from behind to defeat the Oregon Ducks, 21 to 17. With a sigh of relief, the Huskies and their fans return home the following Saturday to meet the Fresno State Bulldogs for the first time in history. And it took the Huskies a quarter and a half to get going, but with Porras, who went 11 for 16 for 158 yards against the Bulldogs, hitting Paul Scanzi with a beauty, and he's run out of bounds at the seventh. 
Tucson Tyler, the junior from Oceanside, California, who's the Huskies' seventh career all-time rusher, with still a year to play, bangs in from the three to put the Huskies on top for good. The first play after the kickoff, the Bulldogs turn the ball over as the pass is thrown right into the arms of senior linebacker Bruce Harrell, the Huskies' academic All-American, who makes the play look easy. Five plays later, Porras, who completed over 50% of his passes in 1979, goes deep in the corner of the end zone to the freshman from Peninsula, Paul Scanzi, who makes his first touchdown catch of the year as the Huskies roll over Fresno State 49-14. The Huskies, who are now 4-0 on the season, move up in the polls as they take on the Oregon State Beavers before 50,000 at Husky Stadium. And the Huskies get on the scoreboard first on this run by Joe Steele, who finished the year not only as the Huskies' all-time leading rusher, but in the top ten at Washington in total offense, all-purpose running, scoring, touchdown scored, receiving and kickoff returns, and he played in just eight games his senior year. The Husky defense held the Beavers to just 38 total yards on the ground, so they were forced to go to the air, and that's all all-conference Bruce Harrell was waiting for as he picked off one of his three passes in 1979, setting up yet another Washington touchdown. Tom Forrest, who threw for 134 yards against the Beavers, gets great protection from his veteran offensive line led by all-conference center Tom Tenure. Forrest then hits Paul Scanzi across the middle, who makes a great diving catch as the Huskies roll over Oregon State, 41 to nothing. The Huskies now 5-0 on the season and ranked sixth in the country travel to Tempe, Arizona to play the Arizona State Sun Devils under the lights with over 70,000 looking on. And on a bizarre night in which Frank Cush coaches his final game at Arizona State after being fired, the Sun Devils and the Huskies hook up in a tough, hard-hitting affair with outside linebacker Jimmy Pence coming up with a big hit on this play. After giving up a couple of touchdowns early, the Huskies try to scramble back with Porras finding Paul Scanzi open over the middle and the 5'10", 175 pound freshman who led the Huskies in receptions with 31 in 1979 sets up a Husky touchdown with this play. And the Huskies call on the reliable Joe Steele to do his thing and the guy who gained over 3,000 yards in four years at Washington dives into the corner of the end zone but the Huskies come up a touchdown short as the Sun Devils win it 12-7 in a game that would be reversed later by a forfeit. The disappointed Huskies then return home to take on one of the top 10 teams in the country, the Pittsburgh Panthers. The Panthers jump out in front of the Huskies, but then freshman Anthony Allen brings the crowd of over 52,000 to their feet with this run. The former Garfield High School star, who is a backup quarterback, will cut to his right, put on a burst of speed, and run right through some people as he roars 99 yards for a Washington touchdown. The kickoff return ties Jimmy Creek's all-time Washington record. The game turned into one of the hardest hitting contests of the year for the Huskies is evidenced by this quarterback sack by senior linebacker Antoine Richardson who closed out his collegiate career by playing in the Japan Bowl. The Huskies turned to junior quarterback Tom Flick in the second half against the Panthers and he completes 11 of 17 for 128 yards including this pass to junior wide receiver Ron Blacken from Lake Stevens who made four catches against the Panthers and finished the season with 25. Tom Flick, the former Interlake High School star, will go to Joe Steele on the goal line. He'll score his final touchdown in a Husky uniform, and he does it with ease. But despite this touchdown and 113 yards rushing this day for Joe Steele, Pittsburgh wins it 26-14. The Huskies return to conference play the following Saturday. They travel south to meet the UCLA Bruins in the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The Huskies gave up a touchdown early, but they come back with a vengeance. As nose guard Stafford May shows why the Huskies were the best defensive team in the conference in 1979. Tom Flick continued with a hot hand as he completes 11 of 17 against the Bruins for 129 yards and two touchdowns, including this 16-yard beauty to Ron Blacken, who comes up with his first touchdown catch at Washington and one of three catches he'll make against the Bruins in this game. The Huskies led the conference in pass defense and gave up only 3.3 yards to play on the ground in 1979. And one reason, the hard-hitting play of senior safety Greg Grimes from Bakersfield. Grimes represented the Huskies in the Hula Bowl game and was second-team all-conference. 
The Bruins were forced to kick the ball seven times against the Huskies, and every time there was the threat that Mark Lee might run it back for a touchdown. And in the third quarter, the senior from Hanford, California, broke the game wide open. As he cuts to the right, runs almost out of the picture, then cuts back and goes 62 yards for a second punt return for a touchdown in 1979. Mark Lee represented the Huskies in the East-West Grind game following regular season play. But the Huskies weren't quite through in Los Angeles as the Husky defense held Freeman McNeil, the second leading rusher in the country, to only 80 yards and forced him to give up the football on this play as defensive tackle Chris Lennon from Arcata, California, falls on the ball. Then Tom Flick, who completed over 60% of his passes while starting the final five games for the Huskies, caps off a great afternoon by throwing to his junior tight end David Bale from San Marino, California for a touchdown as the Huskies stay in the Rose Bowl race with a 34-14 win over UCLA. But they lose Joe Steele for the season with an injury. With the conference championship still in doubt, the Huskies close out the road portion of their Pac-10 schedule by meeting the California Bears on a rainy afternoon in Berkeley. And the day belongs to tailback Vince Toby, the junior from Wilson High School in Tacoma, as he comes off the bench to rush for 97 yards and score three touchdowns, and he gets the first as he fights his way through the middle for six points on this play. The Husky specialty teams also come up with some big plays in the sloppy going, as the Huskies' all-star safety Greg Grimes comes flying to to block this California punt, and freshman Tom Burnham finally recovers the ball at the California four. Kobe will then waste no time getting the ball in the end zone as he finishes the year as the Huskies' third-leading rusher with an average of over four yards to carry and six touchdowns, even though he started only three games in 1979. But the California Bears come back to grab the lead in the game, and after the Husky defense stiffens on this drive, California is forced to kick. And with just over six minutes to play, and California leading 24 to 21, Mark Lee comes up with his third magic run of the year, as he gets great blocking, finds a hole down the sideline, races 64 yards with what turns out to be the winning touchdown, as Mark Lee ties the conference record with three punt returns for touchdowns in a season. But it took a great defensive play by Jerry McLean to finally win it for Washington. Ten seconds to play, the Huskies leading by four, and the conference's total offensive leader, Rich Campbell, throwing. McLean, the junior from Snohomi, dives in front of the receiver at the Husky 11 to save the win as the Huskies defeat California 28-24. to A trip to the Rose Bowl was on the line the following Saturday as the Huskies meet the USC Trojans before a homecoming crowd of over 61,000 at Husky Stadium. And the Huskies and the Trojans lock up in one of the best games in years, with Heisman Trophy winner Charles White running into the Huskies' All-American defensive tackle Doug Martin for no game. Junior quarterback Tom Flick had a big day throwing the football against the Trojans. He completed 18 of 26 for 245 yards, including this 46-yard strike to freshman wide receiver Aaron Williams from Wilson of Tacoma, who came up with five catches for 110 yards against the Trojans. Flick starting only his fourth game as a Husky, double pumps on this play as he sends his other freshman wide receiver, Paul Scanzi deep. Scanzi, who caught five touchdown passes in 1979, comes up with another beauty as he's knocked out of bounds at the one, setting up yet another Washington touchdown. Following the touchdown, Doug Barton comes up with a hit of the year on Charles White as he stops the second leading rusher in NCAA history dead in his track, much to the delight of the sellout crowd at Husky Stadium. With the defense giving the offense another chance to move the football, Flick, who threw for over 800 yards in 1979, finds his favorite target, Paul Scanzi, open over the middle. And he goes in to score one of his five touchdowns of the year as the Huskies stay with a powerful Trojan. And as you might guess, happiness is scoring a Washington touchdown against USC. But USC still leads by seven with time running out, and they're forced to kick. And Husky fans hold their breath with only 5.36 to play as the ball bounces toward Mark Lee. And at the last second, he picks up the football, cuts to the sideline, gets a couple of blocks, and looks like he's gone, only to be tripped up and knocked out of bounds as the Huskies come up a couple of yards short on a couple of occasions as the Trojans win it 24 to 17. The Huskies close out regular season play against the Washington State Cougars before a crowd of over 58,000 
knowing that a win will send him to the Sun Bowl in El Paso. And the Huskies get going in a hurry as Flick throws over the middle to Aaron Williams, who makes a flying catch at the five. Williams averaged just under 17 yards of reception for the Huskies in 1979. Vince Colby, who rushed for 112 yards against the Cougars, makes it look easy on this play as he bangs his way into the end zone to put the Huskies on top. Colby scored six touchdowns for the Huskies during the season. The Cougars had their problems running against the top defensive team in the conference, as evidenced by this play by Husky co-captain Doug Martin, who fills up the middle in a hurry and stops the play cold. Tom Flick, who completed 65 passes and 108 attempts during regular season play, goes to Paul Scanzi in the corner of the end zone, and he makes another touchdown catch as the Huskies, who averaged just under 28 points a game during the season, add six more points to their total. But it was the defense that held off the Cougars in the end, with junior defensive tackle Rusty Olsen running down Steve Rand of Washington State from behind as the Huskies defeat the Cougars 17-7. So it was off to El Paso for the Huskies, who finished second in the Pac-10 with a 6-1 record, as Washington meets Texas in the Sun Bowl game. The Huskies play in a bowl other than the Rose Bowl for the first time in history. And the first time the Longhorns have the ball, they drive to the Husky one. We're on fourth and goal. Greg Grimes comes up with the play of the game as he stops Donnie Little short of the goal line. And the Huskies take over and turn the game around. With time running out in the scoreless first quarter, McIver of Texas goes back to pass. The Huskies come up with a big rush. They knock the football loose, and senior nose guard Stafford Mays dives on the ball at the Texas 42. The Huskies have their first turnover of the football game. Seven plays later, Tommy Flick, who completed 6 of 14 for 57 yards against the Longhorns on a very windy day in El Paso, throws a perfect strike to Paul Scanzi in the corner of the end zone. The Huskies jump out in front of Texas, 7 to nothing. The game then settles into one of the hardest hitting battles of the year, with Greg Grimes running right through the Texas ball carrier as the Husky defense stiffens. Two plays later, the Longhorns give up the football again as they fumble the pitch, and Greg Grimes, who's all over the field, falls in the loose football at the Texas 23, and the Huskies are in scoring position again. The Huskies then call on the only Texan on their roster, freshman tailback Willis Ray Mackey from Lewin, Texas, and he will not be stopped as he powers his way into the Longhorn end zone, and all at once, the Huskies lead it 14 to nothing. With time running out in the game and the Huskies now leading 14 to seven, the defense puts the win away, with Stafford Mays coming up with one of his 10 tackles of the game and one of his two sacks of the afternoon. And as you can see, Happiness is having a big game against the Texas Longhorns. Then on fourth down, Texas goes to the air trying to pull off the win. And outside linebacker Antoine Richardson comes through the crowd to make the hit as the pass flies incomplete and the Huskies hang on to defeat Texas 14-7 to win their second bowl game in three years. So the Huskies close out the season with a 10-2 record and a Sun Bowl win over Texas as Doug Martin and Paul Scanzi win Player of the Game Award. The Huskies, who finished the season with their best record since 1960, have 36 lettermen returning in 1980 as they again look forward to challenging for the Pac-10 Conference Championship and a spot in a postseason bowl game.